Now tonight, a controversial case revealed through never-before-seen evidence. The 11 Alive investigators are shedding light on the now public evidence file in the death of Megan Pope, a young mother-to-be. You can decide for yourself what many have questioned, whether the punishment fits the crime. Megan Pope should have been turning 30 this Saturday, but the life of the expecting mother was abruptly cut short. Brian Feltman is charged with murder. I love you, May May, with all my heart. More than two years have passed. She was the most precious thing in my life. If time truly heals all wounds, her father Lawrence will need several lifetimes. There's not a moment that I don't think about her. We have a picture of her showing it to us, her little belly. But Megan never got the chance to be a mom. <laughs> she and her unborn baby were killed on August 19th, 2012. Justice will never be done at this point, ever. Justice in this case has been a controversial subject. Was her death a murder or was it just an accident? It was 6.30 a.m. on a hot Sunday in August. Henry County Police arrived to this Locust Grove subdivision for a death investigation. At the scene stands Brian Feltman, live-in boyfriend to 27-year-old Megan Pope. Feltman tells the responding officer that they'd been fighting. He had left early that morning, but calls from Megan eventually made him head back home. Feltman first says while driving, he passed her body lying in the roadway, only realizing it was his girlfriend after he had stopped. Neighbors who rushed to help say Feltman told them the same story. Quote, she was just laying there. Police reports describe Feltman's bloodshot eyes, slurred speech, and the smell of alcohol on him. He refuses a sobriety test, and his story to police starts to change. Feltman would admit he knew he'd hit an object in the roadway, that he heard a thump, had driven to his driveway, and turned around to come back and saw Megan, then called for help. <laughs> Police bring Feltman in. Brian, what are you charged with? I'm not charging you with anything just yet. I'm still trying to figure out what's going on. It takes police almost four hours to get a warrant to test Feltman's blood alcohol level. Even still, it registers just above the legal limit at .081. Feltman offers his version of events again, this time on camera. She was laying there. I was driving home from my friend's house. She was Feltman says he won't talk more without a lawyer. Police tell him he'll need one. You're going to be charged with felony murder and you're going to be charged with feticide for the death of the unborn child. Oh. Coming up next, recorded phone calls from jail. Let me ask you a question. Did you okay. hit my daughter in the head with a gun? No, I did not. A distraught father questions the man responsible for his daughter's death. I don't, yeah. sir, I did never do anything like that, sir. And I know they were going to try to try to turn you against me. You'll be charged with felony murder, and you'll be charged with feticide for the death of the unborn child. <sighs> Brian Feltman is now in police custody, facing questions about the death of his girlfriend, an unborn child. Detectives start to investigate the evidence and the relationship between Brian and Megan. Police find Megan's hair and blood on the broken grill of the truck Feltman was driving. The truck belonged to Megan. Police use text messages to determine that Megan was upset and walking to retrieve her truck when she was run over. Police also begin to piece a story together from friends of the couple. Friends would describe a tumultuous nine-month-old relationship. Feltman had had a criminal past and Pope wanted him to get a job, stop drinking so much, and get ready to be the father of their child. The door to their bedroom was broke. Friends had seen several doors in the home kicked in or even off the hinges, a hole punched in the wall, a note Megan had left on the counter saying Feltman had recently scared her. But just a few days before Megan's death, the couple had a fight more serious than usual. Megan had told friends Feltman put this crack in the truck windshield and hit her over the head with a gun while she was driving. He had a gun and like hit her on the back of the head and she showed me the bruises right here behind her ear. While police collected evidence, Feltman from jail told loved ones he didn't murder Megan, that it was an accident. Hey, mama, it's gonna be okay, baby. Oh, it's She's dead, mama.
Lawrence Pope had wanted to believe that at first. Let me ask you a question. Did you okay. hit my daughter in the head with a gun? No, I did not. There's Texas out there that says that you hit her with a pistol on her head. There's your friends out there that know this. How do you think she has a knot on the back of her head that already started healing? I don't, you know, sir, I did never do anything like that, sir. And I know they was going to try to try to turn you against me. But three days after the accident, he had his doubts. I just want you to know that I did not did not, did not run her over on purpose. Never, I didn't see okay. her for the last second. But, or, no, can I keep, can I keep explaining it? Okay. Yeah. Can I keep explaining it? I, did, yeah. I mean, and I, and I, and I, and I freaked out. I didn't know, I didn't even know what, I, I, it was a split second thing. I did not do this on purpose. Last August, the case went to trial. It lasted more than a week, but during it, prosecutor Jim Wright tells us he started to worry about getting a conviction. Certain evidence wasn't admitted, like the gun that Pope said was used in that incident she told her friends about. Defense attorneys claimed Megan was walking towards the center of the road, and it was simply too dark to see. Just before closing arguments, Wright suggested a plea Deal. Please do not do this. They'll let it go to the jury, and the family would accept anything the jury would give him. But it didn't. The jury was sent home, and Feltman was sentenced to serve seven years, but had credit for two he'd already spent waiting for trial. It was like re-murdering her again. I mean, I, you know, to give him seven years, are you kidding me? Wright didn't want to go on camera, but says given the circumstantial evidence in the case, he didn't believe he could prove Feltman intentionally caused Pope's death. We don't have another chance in this world. But Lawrence Pope will always disagree. The last picture is the last picture. The last kiss was the last kiss. The last hug was the last hug. That's it. Brian Feltman pleaded guilty to vehicular homicide and feticide, but has always maintained Megan's death was an accident. We wrote Feltman a letter to prison several weeks ago, but never heard back. He has less than five years left to serve. Katie Beck, 11 Alive News. Now, we've posted more on Katie's story on 11alive.com. From police interrogations to recorded jailhouse calls and the evidence, it's all right there on 11alive.com. What 